Okay, so today's adventure takes us to Mount Hope Cemetery in Bangor, Maine. That's Bangor, not Bangor. And this is 1048 State Street in Bangor. I just got here and I had to stop. I'm about to go to the locations. We'll go do the locations here in a second. Um, because there's a, there's a bunch of things that happen here, but I had to stop and check this out because this is so cool. I had no idea that there was this kind of wildlife here. Check this out. A turtle. And then right over here, look at all these turtles, man. Boom. Turtle. Boom. All kinds of turtles. That is really cool. No idea there were turtles here. I've been here many times and I never knew that. Actually, there's one. One little fella. Wow. We got this little dude too. It's mid-April. So this is how you know in Maine that spring is here. Okay, so when we first get to the cemetery, this is the scene of Missy Dandridge's funeral. And we get this establishing shot here that kind of looks down on the cemetery. This shot you can clearly see this marker here, this grave that says Tebbets. And it's about that angle right there. And you can actually see in Stephen King's uh, cameo as he's proceeding over the funeral, the funeral would have taken place right here. That's where the casket would have been. That's where everybody would have been sitting right about here. And Stephen King himself sort of standing right here and you can clearly see this grave right here and the smaller one surrounding it in this opening shot. But this is where that was exactly. This spot, this frame. So you may recognize this angle here. This is where we have Stephen King's cameo where he would have been presiding over Missy's funeral. Some of the other recognizable areas or spots, I should say, stones are gonna be this one here. This is up in the in the corner of the frame. The Stephen King would have been right here. And that's up in the corner of the frame. You can also see this stone here. And then of course, this tree clearly visible in the shot which would have meant that Missy's casket would have been right about here in this area. So you have Stephen King right here and then Missy's casket here. And then we had the folks who were sitting kind of over in this area here, which if you look way up there, that's where that establishing shot was taken from. That is the stone right here. Whoa, sorry, that's blurry. But this big stone here, that's the one that says Tebbets on it. So it's kind of looking down on this area here. It was actually these two stones. So you have Harriet Patton Blunt, and then you have Catherine R. Blunt. These are the stones that you can see 
in the shot to the right of where Stephen King was standing. Now it's still this, basically the same spot. I was just pointing at these ones, but it's actually these two. Um, but everything else is is uh, is exactly the same. So he would have been standing basically right here. And this open spot right here is where Missy's casket was, uh, as well as everybody kind of sitting that was at the funeral. And you can, you can see this stone as well, particularly well in the establishing shot of this location. The one here that says plumber on it, that's in the shot. You can see this one too as well. So yeah, Stephen King's cameo. He likes to do a cameo in most of his films, if not all of them. And this is one of the most famous, I would say, easily. Now, in the same shot, well, it's another shot, but it's this, it's this same scene. Stephen is kind of looking down over Missy's casket. And again, you know, it would have been right here. Um, and you can see this grave in the background. And you can see these two to his right. Now, one thing that was kind of interesting about this, if you look at the shot where they have dug up the dirt and they piled the dirt to the right of Missy's casket, um, you can actually see the very corner of this stone here that says blunt on it, kind of like that. And you can see just this little bit right here where they piled the dirt basically right on top of that stone. And you can only see a little bit of that corner and then right behind it, you can see these two stones right here, clearly. Another thing that was kind of neat in that same shot is this Catherine Blunt stone right here. In the shot, there's like another, I don't know if it was another stone or a little piece of shale or something that was kind of maybe meant to prop it up. I'm not sure. But if you go around the back side of this, you can actually see, let me get a shadow out of the way here. You can see little pieces of that stone. Now, when Lewis and Judd and Ellie are walking away from the funeral after it ends, the camera's kind of pulling back like this, facing them. And they're walking this way back up to the little road here. And then you get this shot here where Lewis is about to get into his car and Judd stops and, and talks to him and he says something like, I don't know why I gotta take someone like her. We should still have a bunch of years left in front of her and let's move far like me just go on and on. And in this shot, you can see these three stones and then this little one here in the back. And then of course this whole area right here, there's a row of cars running along here, or parked cars, two or three of them. The hearse, Judd's car, and Lewis's car. And this is that angle, that shot right here. And then you may recognize this shot here with the staircase behind me, clearly visible in the shot, where Lewis and Judd are talking, and this is just a, you know, it's just a shot of Lewis's face. But you could clearly see these steps up in the back. You could see this stone, and you can see this tree right behind Lewis's head. And then we get this shot here, where Judd says, How's your cat, Lewis? And he says, it's Ellie's cat. 
No. Jaw cat now. So that's basically it for Missy's funeral scene. But there are some more things that happen here um, that we're going to go take a look at now, including where Lewis digs up Gage. So after Gage's horrific funeral scene, Lewis sends Rachel and Ellie to her parents' house in Chicago, and he's going to stay behind and take care of some things. And apparently one of those things is to dig up poor little Gage's body and bury him up in the Micmac burial ground and see he wants to bring his son back, obviously. And that's kind of the, the, the story of Pet Cemetery in general is how far would you be willing to go to bring back someone you love that has died? And uh, obviously, that's never a good idea. But the thought crosses Lewis's mind, and he decides to give it a shot. And when he does, he sneaks into the cemetery at night. And when he does that, he parks right here on the other side of this fence. And you can see that telephone pole behind him. So Lewis pulls up right here on the other side of this fence, in front of that telephone pole. And you got this little cluster of spikes here to the right of frame. And uh, he gets out of the pass, sneaks out of the passenger side of his station wagon and he's got a shovel with him and he comes and he throws it over the fence here and climbs over and we get this kind of tight angle here where Lewis uh, throws the shovel over the fence as you can see these spikes here on the left telephone pole in the background this is the exact spot where he parked his car and as Lewis is making his way through the cemetery this is a very quick shot, but he walks right past this stone and you can clearly see the 1869 and this little flower shape here, as well as the Neely Andrews stone right there in the background. So Lewis would have walked right by here. So then as Lewis is making his way through the cemetery, trying to get to gauges, burial spot you can see him pass right through here and you can clearly see these two stones this stone obviously this fencing that goes up along here um, and you can actually even see this stone right here in the foreground and this stone here is the one that said 1869 that we got that close-up shot of him walking past now there were two trees in this shot, obviously this being one of them. The other one was right here, but as you can see, it's now a stump. It's been cut down and removed. But this is it. Then we get this shot here. It's just another angle where Lewis is making his way up to Gage's stone. But he walks right here. Part of his body is covering this stone here that says Nelly on it. But you can kind of see the corner of it. And then obviously unmistakable is this and this here. But that's... Just another quick shot as he's making his way through the cemetery. So then we get this shot here where Gage Creed was buried. Right up on this little hill right here next to this little step. You can clearly see this big tree in the background 
this stone and then this little stone right here in the corner of the frame. So it's basically like that. And it's really interesting when you stop and think about it, like why they would bury a toddler literally right next to a step on the side of this little hill. But it works perfectly for the film and for the shot. And that's basically the shot. So right here is where Little Gage Creed was buried. And Dale Midkiff would have sat right here beside the stone. I gotta tell you, I've seen this movie a million times. I've been to these locations several times, but it really never gets old. There's just kind of an eerie feeling. I've seen this movie. I think I saw this movie for the first time when I was like eight or nine. Terrified the shit out of me. So it's really quite a trip to be standing in the same locations where all of this stuff happened and was filmed. So from Gage's stone, which would have been right here on the corner, again, this is the step, the tree is over here. Stone would have been right here. You also get this shot. It's a little bit tighter than this. So it's kind of like that, even though that's cut off a little bit. Yeah, so it's like that. And Lewis would have been sitting right about here. Well, yeah, I guess kind of like right about here because his body is sort of blocking this stone. And you can see this stone here to the left of the frame. And this is the moment where he's like, it's wrong what happened to you. Just another quick angle of the same action that takes place in this location. So another little angle, little shot that nobody ever thinks to get when they come here is this shot where we see a police cruiser come up around this corner by that tree While Lewis is inside the hole of Gage's grave, digging his body up. And you get this shot right here as that cop car is coming right around that little bend beside that tree. And as the cop rounds the bend, he puts the spotlight on and kind of shines it up this way Lewis kind of ducks down into the hole and in the frame in the shot you can see dirt piled up right here and then you can see these six stones one two three four five six wow we got a train in the shot well that's kind of cool and noisy hang tight Welcome back. Wow, that took forever. Anyway, you get this shot here as he's shining the spotlight up on the hill. Lewis is right in the hole right here. I'm, I'm currently sitting where uh, Gage's grave would have been. And there's a little dirt mound in the front and you can clearly see these six stones in the front. And then the H on this one here, very prominent in the shot, as well as this stone right here. I think it says Billings on it. But yeah, this is another uh, kind of just a little obscure angle that no one ever thinks to get when they come here, but it is right in the same spot as I mean, it's, it's uh, that this is where Gage's grave is. 
That's where Pascal stands in front of the Thomas C. Ferris grave. So, it's all right here. And now we have one more shot. And that is this shot here. Victor Pascal standing right in front of the Thomas C. Ferris stone. And you can clearly see these two stones in the foreground and then the three stones off to the right of frame, to the right of the Thomas Ferris. Those are all clearly in the shot. And you have Lewis just kind of talking to Gage. And then all of a sudden, Victor appears in front of Thomas's stone here and says, The barrier was not meant to be crossed. The ground is silver. One of the most famous lines from the whole film shot right there. Again, it's a total trip being here because this scene always used to freak me out. Used to freak me out seeing Victor standing there. He just looked so creepy. The makeup was on point and really effective for my seven or eight year old brain. But this is where that happened. And this is the last shot. So that's going to do it for Mount Hope Cemetery in Bangor. Now, this is one of the most, I would say, memorable, recognizable, prominent scenes in Pet Cemetery, even though there's only two fairly quick scenes that happen here. There's just something about this location that uh, really stands out to a lot of fans and, and uh, most people that want to come visit Pet Cemetery filming locations. This is one of the ones on the top of the list. So I just figured I would do a more in-depth video on this location, get every shot, every angle shown in the film. So if anybody does want to come visit and, uh, and do this themselves, now you know exactly what to get and where it all is. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one.